Hello Ableton lovers, this is Freddy Frogs, Ableton Certified Trainer. Today I'm going to show you a setup that might just change your workflow forever. We actually came up with this setup in the classroom here at Point Blank with the students the other day and I want to show it to you, it's amazing. We're going to be able to preview sounds from the browser and route their signal through an audio track and that's the basic concept of it. It has a lot of implication, I'm going to show you one of them. You see, as I'm previewing now, the sound is actually flowing through a track. I'm going to show you why it's important and how we could use that. I've got to hear a pad sound. It's an ongoing sound and often a classic technique consists in giving a rhythm to this ongoing pad using a side-chained gate. So you might be aware or acquainted with this technique. Classically, we could use a rhythm from the track itself, like these congas. That's great because it, it obviously adds a lot of symbiosis between the pad rhythm and the rest of the track. But another way to use this consists in taking a silent trigger. So I'm going to load a drum sound here. And what we can do is actually trigger the pad with that sound but muting the sound. So that's a silent trigger for your sidechain and that's how we came up with this idea with the students to actually do this in real time from the browser itself. So I'm going to tell the gate now to listen to this sidechain trigger track here and as I am browsing now you're going to see that the, the rhythm is directly applied to the sidechain and I can mute this and this is now becoming a silent trigger and I can therefore choose the right loop for my track. The rhythm is applied in context directly from the browser and before we came up with this new setup you had to actually load the loop into the platform into Ableton Live to actually try it and that was a waste of time and it wasn't really convenient so that way you can really now in real time judge if the loop works for your track or not. So how do we set this up? We're going to open this audio MIDI setup. You'll find this in your application utility folder on a Mac. In the window menu choose the audio device and there at the bottom you can create what we call an aggregate device. An aggregate device lets you couple up a few sound cards to add up their inputs and outputs and this will be seen by Ableton Live like another sound card and therefore you have more inputs and more outputs. In this case I want you to choose the built-in output for example or your sound card and Soundflower. So what is Soundflower? Soundflower is a free virtual sound card. You can download this and install it for free and it will let you route audio signal throughout your Mac from one app to another. So uh, this obviously is very stable and very reliable. It has many implications in our everyday workflow but this is important for this very technique. So back to my audio MIDI setup now. I choose the built-in output first and Soundflower second and therefore they are placed in this order here in this new aggregate device. You can see that my built-in output is using output 1, 2 whilst Soundflower is using the output 3, 4 and the input 1, 2. That's it, you can rename the aggregate device and you will have to restart Ableton Live so it actually see that device. I actually created one prior to this demo and you will have now to choose in your audio tab of your preferences, you have to choose as an input and an output device, you have to choose this new aggregate device. Let's have a look at the input configuration panel. Ensure that the stereo input is enabled and in the output configuration, the 1, 2, which is your built-in sound card and 3, 4, which is your sound flower outputs. Now, open your I.O. section in live and in the queue out section on the master, route your preview to 3, 4, which is sound flower. You can now create a brand new audio track and enable it to listen to Sunflower right here with the audio from section. Now your preview is routed through a track. Now, as I demonstrated earlier on, 
I can therefore trigger a gate using my preview here, like so. See, the sound is flowing through this track here, but it's muted, so you can't hear it, but you can hear the effect it has on the sidechain on the pad. Now we can go one step further, we can be really creative with this. You can apply real-time effect as you're previewing your sounds. Again, to place your previewed sound in context within the track to see if it actually works within this composition. Uh, something that comes to mind straight away as well, uh, we could use the envelope follower in Max for Live. Just let's have a look at this together here. There it is. So if I load the envelope follower Max for Live here onto the sidechain input, now this will write my previewed sound. Let me show you here. You see, this writes the signal of my preview, like so. So now I can apply this to maybe the pads cutoff filter. Let's have a look at how this works now. Yeah, let's just move up the range here. Like so. So not only do we get movement from the gate now, we also get movement with the cutoff, you see? And that's also in time with the track. So th this, this is really amazing what you can do. I'm sure you guys are gonna come up with some amazing implication with this system. It's not that difficult to put together. You can also do this with Windows on a PC and with Jack Audio, which is the equivalent to Soundflower for PC users. If you want to learn more groundbreaking techniques like this one, come and join us here at Point Blank in the classroom.